I wake up every day and um, try to make it through the day and then uh, go to sleep and then wake up again. And um, things happen, things cross my path. Um, and basically I've been making art since I was a child. So um, I look around and um, I guess I see paintings everywhere. And so um, I th just record things in my head. Uh, and even um, if it's uh, music uh, that I hear in some other, um, at a moment, um, I, I think everything has to do with memory. And so um, some event will occur, I'll remember something about that, and then later I'm like a scavenger in a way who's collecting garbage and putting it on their porch and uh, it's in my head really so when it comes up um, and I need it I go to the porch pull it out and I use it so for example uh, in the film The Diving Bell and the Butterfly there's this uh, Bach music playing alongside of uh, these glaciers falling into the Alaskan Sea. Uh, that music was in my head for 20 years. I, ha I had that music since 1987. Uh, I didn't know where I was gonna use it, but I knew it would pop up someday. And in the same manner, I might have seen a shape or something like, um, uh, f or found a material that looked to me like, like it had a, a pictorial space in it whether it's something that um, has to do with sound or it has to do with a moving image or it has to do with something that's still, uh, I basically catalog uh, things that come across my path. I don't think it's so important to leave something around. Uh, I think it's important to notice something, to uh, uh, and pinpoint that thing. And uh, the fact that it's not mine necessarily, but it's something that all of us can um, collectively uh, understand in some way, uh, some subliminal way, uh, sometimes some familiar way uh, and sometime in some way that maybe is uh, um, shocking enough to us to where we feel ourselves uh, observing observation. I remember painting on the kabuki backdrops and people uh, in 1986 and people were saying, well, it, um, are you vandalizing these uh, um, uh, cultural um, or ceremonial paintings that take place at the Kabuki Theater, these backdrops? And I actually met the man who painted the backdrops and he said to me, he was, we showed them at the Setagaya Museum in, uh, in Tokyo and he, uh, they loved the paintings. And he said, I said, well, what do you think about uh, all those images painted? And he said, I never would have thought of doing that. And uh, I think that uh, one way of uh, ascribing to religion or, in, or enjoying um, uh, celebrating religion or practicing is to uh, interact with it. And uh, I don't think that there's any uh, sacrilege or um, uh, irony in those, uh, in those works. The fact is that the person that gave me those works is a very religious person and was extremely uh, um, honored that uh, I got involved in that. And so it's, I think that, that it, it's not worth thinking about that, 
kind of negativity because people don't understand art usually. Anyway, so um, why did uh, they burn all those books um, during uh, the Nazi regime or say that there was a bunch of art that was all, uh, uh, that was corrupting or whatever, or, you know, why did they put Ezra Pound in St. Elizabeth's because they didn't want him to talk to anybody because maybe his ideas would hurt someone. So uh, that idea about violence that I was talking about, I mean, having fun and not hurting anyone. I mean, sometimes uh, ideas do hurt people and uh, they need to kind of be uh, shocked into some other kind of realization so they can be in the present and they can have a maybe a more uh, illuminated reality. Well, that particular poem is really great, and uh, um, there are some lines in that poem that are, uh, well, that's a poem about uh, Bruegel's painting of Icarus, and uh, he talks about the torturer's horse um, rubbing its innocent rump on a um, on the a tree trunk um, and um, doggies doing their doggy stuff in some corner of the picture um, and um, a delicate ship uh, had somewhere to go and uh, sailed on and didn't notice something amazing a boy falling out of the sky uh, to them it was an unimportant failure. Events like that that are recorded, I think, are um, something that we can learn from. And so um, I made those three paintings for a, a chapel. The man who uh, commissioned them originally, was his name was Carlo Bellotti, and he died, and this never happened. Uh, but I made a painting of my three sons, uh, one Olmo, a blonde son, looking up to the sky at his brother, uh, Sai, who was like Icarus, who had uh, fallen and he has uh, no arms or legs uh, and he's in a tree. And then the other brother, Vito, who's got this fur hat on and he's looking, um, he's looking up also to the sky. And I don't think that there is a literal um, uh, connection where uh, it's an illustration of something. It's more that all of these events are uh, have a parallel significance. And uh, so maybe this answers your first question about how do I find my inspiration. I don't like to talk about inspiration because uh, it's a high-handed kind of word. But I think you come across things that make an imprint on you. Sometimes it's as simple as the name of a, the maid or... Um, or it could be a poem, or it could be a film, or it could be another painting, or uh, something that something memorable that somebody could say to you uh, uh, in the course of a conversation. I like to be surprised. Uh, Christopher Walken once said, "If you can't surprise yourself, how do you expect to surprise anybody else?" So. Um, I don't make things uh, to illustrate what I already know. I use myself in the process of making these things to find out things that I don't know. So I know how to begin and I have a basic idea of um, where I'm going, but by the time I get to the landing strip, I uh, hope that I land on the runway. Uh, but. It's more about experimentation and um, <clears throat> using, whether it be painting or filmmaking or making sculpture or drawings or uh, building something, to see it, just to see it, uh, to see something that didn't exist before. And, um, and also, if we talk about filmmaking, it's to work on something with people that can do something that you can't do. Uh, and that's a collaborative, uh, activity which is very different than painting uh, but in the course of that there is a human exchange that is very valuable and ultimately movie making is a much more popular uh, activity so 
you're using film to speak for the dead, for, speak for the invisible, uh, uh, present the impossible, uh, the way literature does. Uh, paintings are uh, concrete objects that embody uh, um, an ideology or a philosophy. Uh, these physical facts become um, a body that you can kind of refer back to, go back to. I mean, have you ever seen the um, uh, Christ, that the head of Christ that was painted by uh, Fra Angelico that had uh, red eyes? You look at that painting and it's just paint on canvas um, or on wood, uh, but you um, find all the humanity uh, in the world in that. So is it about Fra Angelico or is it about you? I think that uh, when you see the diving bell and the butterfly, uh, it's shot in the first person. So are you seeing Jean Doe or is it happening to you? Well, the truth is that it's happening to both of you and that's why it uh, is powerful. And uh, so we find different solutions when we're making art to uh, whether it's telling a story or presenting an eidetic image, it is, uh, uh, that's what I guess the artist is searching for. I saw you had another question on your list about, um, you know, having a healthy body and then comparing that to, I mean, I have said before that um, the Jean, Jean, Jean Dominique Bobby uh, might have selected to give up his body in order to, um, to uh, make a great work of art. Um, he got a chance to live his life in 2020 retrospect vision through his sickness and he made the most of, of that and it was a miracle that he was actually able to do that. It was a great act of will. Um, and uh, I didn't know that at first. I just saw the claustrophobia and his, and his problem. But when I went to the hospital and talked to friends of his, he said, I've been reborn as someone else. We're all doomed, whether you're an artist or not. I mean, you, you're not gonna make it out of here alive no matter how healthy you feel right now or uh, you know, how cozy it is at home. I mean, you're all, we're all gonna end up like Jean-Dominique Bobby, center stage, going into the next life. I like to make things, um, and um, that is the solution for my struggle, uh, which is, uh, how to um, live with other people uh, if you have certain privileges um, and you can um, do something about certain situations. It's a responsibility to do the work. Uh, I think that's a difference between, say, an artist and somebody that's a journeyman filmmaker or uh, uh, someone that's a, that works for somebody else. You are responsible for the things you put in the world and that responsibility, that's the struggle. You know, what can you be responsible for?